1320 WEMB Sports Radio Irwin. Real Sports Talk, a Jet Broadcasting Station. This bring back any memories? I used to love this. Yes, is that unmistakable music indicate that is the old school? It's about thirty years old, actually. I guess now, geez, time flies, huh? The theme, or at least that was what they would come back to Headbangers Ball in on MTV back in you know my teenage years and such. This is Marky e. Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri City sports fans. Name of the program is Tri City Sports Now. We own the Tri-Cities with the best guests and the hardest hitting opinions in the market. Other people will shy away from the tough topics of NASCAR, let's say. Not us. Now you want to keep it light and pleasant and, you know, talk about tire change. I've got a story on maybe new tires in NASCAR or something like that. Half the audience is sort of like, new tires in NASCAR, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, you know. What is, and I know it's not. That's what other people talk about. We Slayer Gate, and I got the best person in the world to talk to, uh, to about Slayer Gate. Anybody hear about Slayer Gate? I know everybody heard about Slayer Gate. That unmistakable music that, you know, you want to do it again? Here we go. Here we go. Here. All right. <laughs> All right, yes, there, Headbangers Ball, Ricky Rockman is going to join me in about 15 minutes. Former host of the Headbangers Ball, now host of Racing Rocks, syndicated racing program. He's been doing that for quite some time now. Motorcycle enthusiast, you know, metal enthusiast. He likes classic country, too. We got to that last time we talked to him. But uh, I've gotten tremendous feedback from back when, when we interviewed Ricky Rockman before the 2017 Spring Bristol race. So we're going to have him on to talk about Slayer Gate. And then it's the normal 1 o'clock guest, Jerry Bonkowski. So I'm uh, going to ask him about Slayer Gate as well. But uh, some more traditional topics about the, the Bass Pro Shops NRA 500 that took place Saturday night. Jerry Bonkowski, the right rev of speed, or as I like to call him, the right rev of rev. Well, he'll be coming on 1 o'clock and then 1.30. Looks like Chance Thrasher is going to be the quarterback at ETSU. And we're going to talk to him. We're not going to talk to Chance Thrasher. I'm sorry. We're going to talk to our normal, I'll get it right, 1.30 guest on Monday. That's SoCon John Hooper of Herosports.com and uh, Medium and MidMajor.com. SoCon John Hooper, he covers a SoCon for everybody. But yes, I am excited that Ricky Rockman is coming back on the show. And the reason why is because it is now, here's the mantra, okay? Everything's acceptable in NASCAR, as far as I can figure out, except these three things. Cigarette advertising, tobacco advertising, I suppose. I don't see, uh, you know, the Skull Car. I mean, I don't see Harry Gann out there for a, you know, a variety of reasons why we wouldn't see Harry Gann out there anymore. But, uh, no, we're not going to see the Skull Car anymore. You know, no, that's not going to happen. We're not going to see the Levi Garrett Car anymore. This goes without saying. But regardless, we're going to have tobacco advertising. Not going to see the Confederate flag in the infield anymore. Not going to see the rebel flag in the infield. I mean, it just, you know, no, it's not being done anymore. And it seems like the third thing is heavy metal. And I get, I mean, and I understand both sides of this coin, okay? That's what Rick Ware racing. J.J. Yaley. Not a prominent driver. He finished 28th. All right. But he was going to run the 54 car, and his sponsor was going to be Slayer. Yeah, the heavy metal group Slayer. And go back into Slayer. Now, I'm an ACDC guy. I mean, you know, Slayer, 
Yeah, I, I don't, I'll give you an example. I don't have any tattoos. Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth, I've been to a Megadeth concert, I've been to Anthrax, haven't been to Slayer, I've been to Super Joint Ritual, there you go. Pantera, did I been to Pantera? No, I haven't been to Pantera. I used to listen to a lot of Pantera. And a friend who was into Pantera. Okay, so Cowboys from Hell, that was a big thing, you know. Regardless, the... What we have here is the, those kind of metal groups, you know, they're hard. And those are the sort of bands that the first person to get a tattoo in your school, if you were in Generation X, that's who they listened to, you know? I was sort of like, Motorhead was kind of where, like I said, okay, it's kind of, I'm going to get, I've been to see Motorhead when they still existed. Came away with bruised ribs from the mosh pit, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, I talk about this, I'm not, I mean, Metallica has become the heavy metal band and all that, but then a little bit down beneath them, I would say, somewhere, Slayer, they were the Anthrax and Testament and all that. They've been around for a while, they're touring, and they were going to sponsor J.J. Yaley's race car. Now, although they used to be on Headbangers Ball, and if you just missed it, yes, Ricky Rockman's going to join me in about 10 minutes uh, to talk about Slayer Gate. There's a long way. They may both be hard rock, but uh, I know that there's a long, long, long way from Poison and Slayer. These are the bands I used to listen to, okay? But they used to both be on the Headbangers Ball, and I mention that because years ago, 2001, Derek Cope drove the Poison race car. They were making a comeback. And he drove it in Pocono. So this isn't the first time that a band that has appeared on Headbangers Ball has tried to sponsor a race car. Once it was, you know, very, very uh, successful. But Slayer is pretty hardcore. And if you're not familiar with it, here we go. They once made an album... Uh, and it was called, entitled, God Hates Us All, all right? I mean, this is the metal of metal, you know, and, and all of this. But then again, I mean, we can watch Clerks 2, and they're making references to King Diamond. I mean, you know, it's a, I do get why Rick Ware Racing would say, then, that it Slayer didn't align with its image and beliefs. But I'll also say this. President Donald Trump once posed for photos and even made, doing it on Facebook here, that, you know, old devil horns uh, gesture with his hand that, you know, Ronnie James Dio made famous. Yeah, the President of the United States with Slayer. So they're that mainstream. Say what you will. Uh, I get Slayer is controversial. Oh, yeah, that they want to be, trust me. First song in her first album was about Auschwitz. I mean, you know. <laughs> but it's an old controversy. MTV was playing their videos, you know, when Ricky Rockman was the host of the Headbangers Ball from 90 to 95. Now, Rick, we're racing. They have the right to back out. I mean, I understand why they would, but it makes them look out of touch because, my goodness, the band's name is Slayer, and you didn't look into them? I mean, come on here, the band's name is Slayer. You pretty much know when they come to you that way that they're not singing about beautiful women in sunny days. I mean, why don't you do a little bit of a background check on them here, folks? Meanwhile, you got let's say the NFL, they're getting heat for accepting Jay-Z into their fold. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, Jay-Z, certainly I would suggest that he's more mainstream than, than Slayer is, you know, and he's made more money, let's face that fact. Uh, but this is a guy who's penned many songs and rapped many songs that contain, we've talked about this, all kinds of slurs. Now, whether or not, you know, we can discuss, okay, does what has become, you know, a slur that has become mainstream in rap culture, uh, or the defamation of women calling them, you know, hoes or whores and whatever else, that also has become mainstream. But then again, once upon a time, I mean, I could show you where, 
you know, Slayer's lyric, you know, well, we've got Slayer over here, we got Testament over here, we got, you know, King Diamond over here, Metallica was a little bit, I'm trying to think, Metallica, I mean, you know, it saw the album Kill Em All, I mean, come on, you know, but, nah, you know, Megadeth, what, they covered Anarchy in the UK, I mean, you know, so, I mean, I'm, I've been around them. I mean, Megadeth's story that I have is I actually, uh, Dave Mustaine is a Raiders fan, and I found this out because I actually went to the hotel to get autographs once upon a time uh, after going to the Megadeth concert. I, did, I wasn't as into him as my friend was, but it was just something kind of did back in those days. Went to the hotel. Somebody was wearing in the hotel a Raiders shirt, and they were about to play the Buffalo Bills, the then Los Angeles Raiders, uh, for the right to go to the Super Bowl. And I remember Mustaine sees that and says, yeah, that's my team, blah, blah, blah. They're going to do it on, they're going to do it this Sunday. And the Bills beat them 51 to 3 to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> so don't, you know. I also remember Dan Quayle speaking in Johnson City around the same time, a couple of years before. And he once said that the Buccaneers are going to play the Mountaineers. And I think we all know who's going to win that one. That was his quote before a campaign rally in the 88 presidential uh, race at Brooks Gym, and uh, similarly, ETSU lost to Appalachian State by the same 51-3 score. So, Dan Quayle and Dave Mustaine, what do they have in common? Well, now you know. And I remember after that, I took Marty Friedman to McDonald's, a guitarist. There you go. My claim to fame. But no, I mean, Jay-Z, NFL, I mean, now says he wants to own a team. Eric Reed doesn't think the, the remaining Kaepernick fans out there are all, how could you sell out Colin Kaepernick? All this sort of stuff. I think that has pretty much been played. I got to be honest with you, and then Colin Kaepernick right there. But maybe there's this difference, and I mentioned this a while back when you talk about, you know, and I do wonder, look, is complaining about Slayer, is complaining about Jay-Z, this era's, oh, Elvis is bad for the youth of America, he's swinging his hips. Again, I don't know, because I don't necessarily think that swinging your hips is as offensive as, you know, some of the lyrics that you would get in a hardcore rap or metal song. I'll be brutally honest. If you want to look at being, you know, offensiveness, you know. But one of the differences between metal and hip hop is that it's often said that heavy metal acts, their lyrics are based on fantasy, often dark fantasy, but fantasy nevertheless. What does hip hop preach? Keep it real, keeping it real. So and I, I mean, there are all sorts of, you know, other argument, race, you know, all this, but yeah, what's it, keeping it real? Anyway, here's the deal. Does NASCAR now look prudish? That's the thing. Does Na I mean, this is a band that's been out for more than 30 years, and they're just now figuring, oh boy, there are some lyrical content here that, you know, my goodness, you know, this isn't all that far away from Gaul and Gogoroth. Remember that scene in the history of metal, you know, and all this where, you know, Gaul is nursing a you know, glass of wine and the interviewer says, what's the, what's the inspiration for your music? And he just looks at them and goes, Satan. You know, he's trying to be a real badass, you know, that sort of thing. And so... But I will say this, I could see this all blown over, because ultimately it's a, a story of a secondary driver on a Monster Energy Cup series changing his sponsor at the last minute, changing to pods, moving in storage. Generally, that's not that big of a story. I mean, the guy finishes 28th in a race. He's not, and I'd, even Jimmy Johnson now, who also is you know, finishing 28th, you know. But it is a little bit different here because of the players involved, Slayer and all this. I just want to ask you this. I mean, we're said to have, we want to have an inclusive society. And we're said, well, maybe you don't understand hardcore rap. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to debate you. But if it's an inclusive society, shouldn't we allow metalheads in it as well? That's my question.
So, I also think that, yes, old school metalheads might be more in touch uh, with the NASCAR scene than some other genre of music their following would have and all this. Andy Slagle, the trooper, who, by the way, is, I think, going to do the color commentary for our first Unicoi County football game this Friday, has said politics don't belong in sports. They always have been in there, Andy. The Princess Fiona.